If you didn't get a chance to look at these questions over the weekend, I know it, it was a nice weekend for the most part. Sun was out. Let's take a look at this one now. We've got two tables. It shows the speed of a skydiver before the parachute opens. And we've got two different scenarios. They're saying the first one is with no air resistance. The second table is with air resistance. What are we talking about here? Like, what is, what is the difference between these two tables? Like, what does that mean if there is no air resistance and there is air resistance? What are we, what are we referring to? What do you think? Yes, sir. Before the parachute is like, open after. Okay, so he's saying before the parachute is open and, and after. However, here it's saying in the question, it says that it's the speed before the parachute opens only. So you're on the right track, like they're different speeds, but not quite before and after the parachute opens. But I like the logic, I like the thinking. Yes? If the diver is entering the atmosphere at a more aerodynamic angle, then there's going to be less resistance against his body. Nice. So essentially what we're looking at here is really the scenario of if, and sorry, do you want to add on to that, Jordan? Yeah, those flying squirrel suits. So you'd be, you'd have less resistance, right, to the air around you. So essentially, here, if we're, if we remove the air resistance, because keep in mind, right, there is, there is things in the air. Like, what's air made of? What's air or oxy or the oxygen around us? What is that made of? What's in the air? Uh, it's a mix of mostly hydrogen, oxygen, uh. A little bit. It's different elements that make up uh, what we breathe. Awesome. So it's not like empty space, right? Like there's stuff. Like when I move my arm here, I'm actually moving through, uh, through particles, right, and all kinds of different uh, molecules and so forth. Well, yes. The atmosphere is about seventy-eight percent nitrogen, twenty-one uh, percent oxygen, and traces of CO two, methane, and other stuff. I like it. There you go. That's more than I knew about the uh, the atmosphere, which is awesome. So. Thank you there, Anthony. Now, if we look at this case, what, what they're trying to say is if they remove all of these particles in the air, all the elements in the air, we would likely go slower or faster. What do you think? Slower or faster? If this was just empty space and there was no particles in the way. We'd obviously go faster. You're going to go faster. So that's that comparison that we're looking at here. So with no air resistance, you'll notice that you're going faster than if there is air resistance. However, the question is, let's determine whether both of these, one of them or none of them, are linear. So how can I do that? And notice here, it's being very specific. It says, without graphing. How could we do that? And we did look at this on Friday. We've done it in the past as well. What would be one way that I could do this without doing any graphing? What do you think, Sarah? Awesome. So we could do those first differences. So can somebody tell me what are first differences? How do I calculate them? What are they? Because if we don't know, then that would make it difficult to make this effective. What do you think there, <coughs> Sophia? The difference between uh, each one. So like it would be 9.8 9 uh, minus 0, and you get 9.8. Awesome. So our first difference is you can always just kind of make a, a column to the side and what we're doing is essentially taking the difference of the two values. Always taking the second value first, okay? Because we want to see how, how much it's going up by. How about 19.6 uh, minus 9.8? 19.6 minus 9.8. Megan? What's that? 9.8. Let's do it again. How about 29.4? Minus 19.6. Anthony? 9.8. Awesome. It looks like we've got a pattern. We should always check, though, the entire table they give you. This is a kind of a heads up. In the past, I've seen on EQAO where the first three will be the same, and then maybe one of the last two is not. And they want to make sure that you're checking for certain. Okay? But can somebody confirm are the last two first differences going to be the same? Are they going to be constant? What do you think? Hassan? Yeah. They are. Nicely done. So what does this say if the first differences are constant? They are the same value all the way down. What is that going to tell me about this here? Megan? Awesome. So this guy is definitely linear. Whoa. 
definitely linear, and that's because our first differences are constant. So something to keep in mind, if you ever need to determine if it's <laughs> linear or not, checking your differences will definitely help you out. Yes, sir? Wouldn't this also be kind of unrealistic? Uh, for no air resistance? Absolutely. And I think that's the comparison they're trying to make here is that if there was nothing stopping you, gravity's going to pull you down and you're going to start going at a cons. You're going to increase. Your speed will yeah. continue increasing. And you won't have uh, terminal velocity. Have you ever heard of that? What does that mean? What happens for terminal velocity? What do you think? Is Andrew still ha have your hand up there? Yeah. You cannot go any faster. Can't go any faster. You actually will get to a point when you're dropping that you will get to a maximum speed. You're not going to go any faster. Gravity can't pull you down. Okay. Now, in the real world, when we have air resistance, there's something blocking us. So gravity can't take its full force. Right? So I wonder if I have air resistance, would this still be linear? So before we even do the differences, just kind of think about that. If the air resistance is there, so we have these molecules and these particles in the air kind of slowing us down, would it stop it from being a linear increase in speed? What do you think? Something to think about. And now I've actually experienced terminal velocity because I've gone skydiving before and it is pretty crazy and you can actually you almost feel that point when you get to the maximum speed because at first you feel like you feel like you can't breathe and you feel like you're you're trying to ga gasp for air but then you get to a point where you just feel like you're floating because you're going at that constant speed you're not increasing speed anymore not accelerating okay Timmons? At first it does, but then, like I say, as you kind of, once you get to like almost like that constant terminal velocity, that speed, that, uh, that highest speed, you just feel like you're floating out there. And you honestly, you're so high up, you look down, you don't even think about the possibility that you're going to hit the ground because you feel like you're so, it's like, ah, that's so far away, even though it's only a minute away, right? Like you'll, you'll get there very quickly if you don't pull, pull your chute. So um, something very, very cool to think about, except... When I'm falling, there was air resistance there, obviously, right? I was actually being held back by, by the air in the atmosphere or the air around us. So let's do our first differences real quick here. Let's see, is this guy going to be, uh, is this guy going to be constant first differences? What do you guys see here? I know the first one's 9.6. Then what are we looking at? Seven. Seven. Right there, do I need to go any further? What does that tell me? What do you think, Anthony? Non-linear. Nice. And that, once again, is because the first differences are not constant. One big thing that we got to watch out for, though, what in both of these tables is the same? When I'm checking first differences, what do I have to keep my eye open for just in case someone wants to throw you the curveball? You know, I like baseball. I might throw you that curve. What do you think, Luke? Time. The time. What about the time's important? Right, like let's say maybe I only, I only checked my speed after one second, then five seconds, then six seconds, then nine seconds. If I'm not checking at a constant uh, interval, then my first differences aren't going to be accurate, right? They could still be constant, but I'm not, they're not going to appear to be constant, right? So that's something really, really important for us to look at. Now, if I give you an equation, I guess it would be nice if you could see it, eh? Because it appears that you can't. So let me, uh, let me just move this down here for a second. I'm going to move this guy down. And I'm going to move this guy down. Here we go. Can we see it now? There we are. Perfect. So now, I'm giving you a graph or a grid. And I'm giving you an equation. Can somebody outline what do you know about this equation? What jumps out at you? <laughs> It could be something very, very maybe obvious. It could be something a little deeper. It doesn't have to be like an ingenious observation. What do you think, Andrew? Uh, that it's going to be partial variation because there's a additional value. Awesome. So he knows right away that this thing's partial. 
because of the initial value. Nicely done. Now, can we build on that for a second, folks? What is the initial value? He knows it's a partial variation. Awesome. What is the initial value there, Megan? Four. Initial value is 4. Awesome. What else do we know, folks? What else do you know? And I'm just going to highlight this. So initial value right here is this guy right there for those people who are uncertain. What else? Nate? Constant of variation squared. Ooh, constant of variation. Nice. <laughs> what else can we call that? Very good there, uh, Nate. I like the wording you used because we haven't been using constant of variation very often recently. So it's good to kind of reach back and pull that term out. What's that also called? We call him something else. <coughs> He's also known as? As the? Coefficient. Ooh, he is a coefficient of x. I like that. Very good. 3 is a coefficient of x because it's in front of the variable. What about that value, though, that number 3? It is constant of variation. It has two other names that we've been using. What's one of them, Jordan? Uh, slope. Slope is one of them. And what's the other one that we've been using? And they're all the exact same thing. What do you think, Adam? Rate of change, nicely done. So the rate of change. So it's important to note, guys, that on a test, on a quiz, on an assessment, they could use all three of those terms, and you still get that same value of three. Okay, so those guys are this guy right here. What's that general equation called again that we're looking at? Y equals mx plus b. So guys, right here, this thing is linear. Anytime you see an x term and a number, you know it's linear right away. Okay? So we do have a linear relationship. It is partial. What is this going to look like? What if you had to graph this? What would I do to graph it? And I'm going to help you out here. I'm going to put a scale on here. If you can graph this, then you're in good shape. So here we go. Zero, there's one, there's two, three, four, five, six. I'm not going to put every, every number in there. Perfect, and then we'll assume the rest. Where do I begin this graph? This is something we're going to look at tomorrow, so we haven't really looked at this yet. However, I feel like you guys have all the background information to at least get this thing started, and you might be surprised how easy it'll be from there. What do you think? What do you think, Hassan? Awesome, so the initial value, so there it is. Do you guys see it right there? So is that the initial value, folks? Is that where I put it? Because remember, the initial value is 4 right up there. So is that what we're talking about? What do you think there, Graham? You're on the wrong axis. Wrong axis, right? So it's got to be on the y-axis. There he is. Now what do I do? The only other piece of information I know is my constant of variation, my rate of change, or my slope. Those are all the same thing. What can I do with that? What can I do with that? What's that called? I know there's a, an ugly equation for it, but there's also kind of like a, I say it rhymes. It really doesn't rhyme, but it's easy to remember. What is it that I know about slope? What is it? Rise over run. Rise over run. What's my rise and what's my run here, folks? What's my rise, and what's my run? What do you think? Everybody should take a quick peek. You, you must know how to do this for the test. We're going to look at it in depth tomorrow, but you might as well look at it now, because trust me, this is, once you know this, super easy. You'll be easy street all day long. What do you think, Mr. Brown? Say that again. The rise is? Four. Is the rise four, folks? Is the initial value part of the uh, slope? That guy? Or you're real close. What are you thinking, Adam? Ooh, careful. Where do we look for the slope again? Where do we look there? Luke? 
There you go. So real close, remember this guy right here? That's your slope right there next to the x, okay? So the rise is 3. Remember, that's 3 over 1, okay? And there you have your rise is 3, your run is 1. So check this out, guys. If I go up 3, 1, 2, 3, and over 1, there's my next point on that line. I do it again. Rise 3, 1, 2, 3, over 1. There it is right there. And guess what? My line has now been graphed, boom, every single time. And you could double check that as many times as you'd like. We've got our initial value of four. We've got a rate of change of three. So I'm going up one, two, three, over one, one, two, three, over one, and we're good to go. Jordan? Absolutely you could. I think this might be a little quicker, but you could do that. So, for example, um, Jordan's saying if I subbed in x equals 1 and I sub it in to the equation here, what would I get? What's 3 times 1 plus 4? Because keeping in mind, right, we're looking at the equation, 3x plus 4. What's 3 times 1? What's that? 3 times 1? Austin? Oh. Awesome. So let's double check. So if I go and I start at 1, and then I go all the way up to 7, so there's 7 right there, there's my point, and it's confirmed. So you can always double check that. So x is 1, 7 is y, and there's my point, and we're all good. So that's a very, very uh, good way to look at it as well. Okay? Everybody cool with that? Any other questions before we move on for today? All right. Good job, people.